back in the workshop. It's been a long time since I've done a video. Um, still around. Obviously the UK's been in lockdown for the last few months so haven't been out and about. Got some stuff coming up this year though, got some new stuff. Brought a mirror dinghy quite last year so I've been converting that, can do some wild camping and cruising on that. We've got some more wild camping coming up later on in the year. Uh, April the 12th we can obviously go back out on holiday and get back out camping again. Been waiting for that to come around. End of the April, beginning of May. I've actually got three weeks off. I'm actually going to walk the coast to coast um, from St. Bees to Robin Hood's Bay. Just under 200 miles. 12 night, mostly wild camping. Eating dried rations. Using pubs and such. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to do some more about them later. I'm going to do some few videos leading up to that on the kit I'm taking. Should be able to get a, 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 another wild camp or maybe a sail in that time as well, which will beforehand. I think it, actually, the actual 29th of April is the day I leave to go to doing the coast to coast. We come out of lockdown to be allowed out on the 12th of April. So that does leave a, a week and a bit to before I, you know, a bit of time to, I might actually get a camp in that time. So I'm going to do a few little videos before that. I'm going to do a video on, on the clothing I'm taking, the layered clothing system. Different kit as well, the tents and whatever I'm going to be using, the cooking kit. Some of it's going to be explaining how to use it and why I'm taking it. Obviously 12 days a wild camp is quite some time so you do have to be very clever with what kit you take. Enough of that later though. Today I'm actually doing a, a DIY mod on a, an autopilot. This is a, a Ray Marine ST1000 autopilot. Which is basically this. I've actually already removed the cover. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be adding this PCB. What that is, that's going to allow me to operate the, the remote control. This is the four-way version. There's actually, a, they do two versions of this remote unit. Four-way with four buttons or six-way. So if you wanted to mimic all of the buttons on your ST1000 you could go the six way route and do it all. But I find I don't use the the plus and minus one buttons so I'm gone for the four way so I'm going to be using the minus 10 degrees plus 10 degrees standby and auto. It's an easy mod so basically them switches are going to mimic what's on there. It's an easy little PCB available in China that I'll be putting some links up it's basically works in the same way as a normal switch. So this, these are push to make switches. So every time you press one of these buttons, it pushes on the switch. Single, obviously hold it down. It's a single thing. This PCB will do the same thing. So what I'm going to be doing is going to be fitting the PCB in, wiring it in, and wiring it directly to the switches. So in effect, the switches then become Control, remotely controlled by the little remote controller, a little close up there. It's quite an easy mod. I'm going to be fitting it, the PCB, into this section here. You could also fit it there, but I, I find you're better off keeping electronics away from motors. This is a, an old, looks like a 540 size brushed motor. I'm going to keep it away from them really. This is what they look like inside, in case you've ever opened one up. It's quite a simple operation. They do have a few technical drawbacks, these things, considering how much money they are. They don't have an end stop, so unfortunately when the, when the rod goes 
to its maximum and shortest lengths, the teeth jump on the belt. You'll hear it when you use it, it goes dit, 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 where it's jumping. When they designed these, they should have fitted in stops of some sort to stop that happening. I find out that happens when I try to use the auto attack feature on, on my boat. It doesn't really work very well. The auto attack feature. Other than that, they're good units. Easy to use. Fairly reliable as long as you keep them dry. Some people have, have had water ingress issues. They do have a, a seal around them to stop water going in. And the, the, the keypads are sealed on the inside as well. As you can see, there's a, a silicon beading around the outside there. I also, when I use it, I actually I brought a, 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 a cover which is, was specially made for it by somebody on eBay. They do recommend the covers when using them. They are a simple autopilot. You basically set the rod in and out to the, the position you need it. Click auto and then the rod will stay there and keep it on that position. They are decent units, well proven been around a long time. This is a fairly easy mod. I'll show you the switches up close. The push to make switches. You see there's four contact points on the, each switch. The, the parts that actually make contact when you switch are the ones on on the sides rather than here on the on the lamp side. And so basically there and there you press that and that will create a, a push to make. So you've got a wire, the wires into for the remote into this set these pads here you see them there I'll take some photographs as I go along and add more details but it's an easy mod basically wire the wires into the switches run them down here I'm going to use this gap I'm going to fit the wires onto the board using uh, hot glue so they don't move I'll use hot glue to hold the PCB in as well and we'll get going. Basically got to collect some supplies together, some wire. Also need to take the 12 volt feed off of this. These run on 12 volts straight from the boat's electrics. The 12 volt feeds are into these wires here. The actual wires into the main unit of these pins. I'll figure out which ones they are. As I said, I'll, I'll, I'll take some more detailed pictures as I go find out which one's positive which one's negative we're wiring some temporary wires for testing because obviously this PCB also needs its own 12 volt source as well so we we'll have to wire into that we'll get going That's how it goes I move the camera over slightly so you can get a better view of the the actual electronics Give it a go, see how it goes. Right, we've gathered all the bits together. I've actually wired a, a temporary connection onto the, the board. I get a little screwdriver. You can see that it's actually powered up at the minute. You can see the display. This side. A positive connection positive 12 that's the negative 12 connection on that side you'll see the pins underneath there there's a brown and blue wire going in you'll see which ones are the positive when we actually do the main wiring we'll wire it onto the that's a two pin connection on the back of the board there you'll see it's like a Lucar style connection so when we wire onto it we'll feed off of that on the other side Nice close up there so you can see. I wrote on the board the connections to match the switches. So you've got plus 10, minus 10, auto and standby. 
on the back of the remote PC you'll see it's relay controlled so on the relays it's got A, B, C and D this corresponds to the the switches on here so A, B, C and D is the, the different switches on the, the board we're going to mimic that on here so that will be minus 10 plus 10 standby auto so looking at that switch A goes to there so this one's going to be A, B, C and D just got to match up the wiring it connects on the board it actually connects using the A and B connections on there it's a bit confusing they shouldn't have actually write that because obviously because they've A, B, C and D there they shouldn't really put A, B, C along there because it makes it all confusing but it connects on the, the two each connection's got three relays it makes connection positive connection on the two left hand ones there so what we've got to basically do we've got to feed two wires one for each of there back onto the wires directly onto the switches add a positive and negative connection which connects in here and then it should work I've gathered all the wires together we're going to use red and black for the, the positive and negative four different color wires for the various switches here we go I'll do it on I'll fast forward this bit or time lapse it one or two Right, I'm back, figured it out, I read the instructions. On here, I'm going to try and get a close up. See, there's a, a three way jumper. You can alter its positions. You can take it off like it's off now. Connecting the two left pins makes it an interlock, makes it basically. You press the remote button, the switch comes on. Sw then you have to switch it off, press the remote button to make it go off again which is not what we want, we want a temporary connection you connect the two right ones you get a, a permanent connection so you press the remote and it stays connected until you press something else but if you take the jumper off then you then get the what we want which is like the single press key so basically pressing remotes is exactly the same as pressing the switches on, on the thing so I've now got full control over it this is like normal adjustment levels, A and B. So that's minus 10. It's not in autopilot mode, so this is adjusting to fit the tiller when before you switch on autopilot. And you switch on autopilot using D. It's now in autopilot mode. I think the boat's turning so it's adjusting to suit. We're back in course. That's it on standby with C. 
Thanks out of autopilot again. Autopilot. Obviously once it's in autopilot mode you can adjust the course plus or minus. You can add 10 degrees. By doing that. You can take 10, 10 degrees away. And stand by again, take it off. So it's now fu fully functioning. So it, is, it does work straight out of the box. The connections are A and B to the switches. You just need to remove the the jumper to put it into the like normal lap switch mode. So each you'll be able to hit. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it on the thing. You, you might be able to hear the the relays clicking. It's all working. Two remotes. It comes with it. These boards are about ten pounds on eBay or AliExpress. I'll stick some links up. I'm now going to fit it into the case. I'm going to use some hot glue for that. I'm going to hot glue the wires down so they're nice and neat. I might have to readjust the length slightly. Now I know it's functioning. Once it's all neat and tidy, I'll come back. I'll do some close-ups of the board while it's out. So you can see the proper connections. So you can see the jumper there. The little switch is actually for for the remote control learning. You can actually add remotes if you want. Obviously, two is enough for me, but if you want you can add. Obviously this board can be used for all sorts of things. It's good for general projects. There's the basic connections on the board. The white wires you see are temporary ones so I can add a battery. I've got a temporary 12 volt battery connected. So it's a nice easy project, didn't take too long to do. That's the positive and ne negative connections you'll need. Obviously, make sure, if you do do this, make sure your wiring is nice and neat. You don't want to be bridging connections and blowing your boards. I'll fit it all together. I'll hot glue the wires down, get it nice and neat. Come back and you'll be able to see the final result. Well, I'm back. As you can see, it's all fitted in place. I've had to change it very slightly. Because of the wires. Wait a second, there's a couple I haven't put in place. Originally my idea was to put the, the PCB in here. That didn't work, so I've had to change the idea slightly. The reason being, I hadn't allowed for the bottom of the RAM on this to go backwards and forwards, because this was up there, underneath the board. I assumed it fitted, but it doesn't. It actually touches the tops of the relays as it comes back very slightly. So I've had to change the, the position. It's all wired the same still. What I did move the PCB to the back here. I've actually wired the wires in directly underneath now rather than having the screw terminals. I've actually soldered to the bottom of the terminals. Still the same connections. It's just soldered in. I've glued the board in with hot glue, so it's nice and stable, can't come undone. 
because the board's gone at the back the wires have had to root through underneath the control to do that I had to remove the, the, the sheath on the original cable because it to allow for enough room for the new cables to go through but that's come off all right and that actually goes down all right I've actually already had this together so it does actually fit all together there's a gap underneath here a U channel where all the wires run as long as you take the, the sheath off by the sheath I mean I mean the, the cable, there's a multi-core cable that wires to the boat that terminates in the plug that was actually in there it was with the cable inside all I did is cut it off with a pair of cutters by taking that off it was quite thick that allowed enough room for the wires to fit underneath without any modification had to modify the top chassis just a touch to allow for the board there's some plastic pieces, braces in here. What I did, I, cut, I snipped them away with snip, snippers and pliers to take away some of the little channels because otherwise it didn't allow it to fit. It's not enough for, to cause any issues. It's all wired up still. I've still left a temporary power feed on there just to show as you can see it's still working obviously I've yet to fully test it on the boat but I have no interest no Problems not thinking it's going to work. I don't know what the range of this is. As long as it's the length of the boat, I'm not probably. But it's all functioning. Worked really well. Going to put it all back together. Take away this temporary wire. Call that finished. I'll, te I'll test it later date on the boat. Hope you enjoyed that video. I don't do many DIY videos. I thought I'd do this one because I haven't actually seen anyone do this on YouTube yet. So I'll give an indication. Don't forget though, if you do do this, you are voiding your warranty. So don't do it if it's a new unit. You don't want to void your warranty. And obviously only cap do it if you think you're capable of the soldering, it's quite intricate soldering, you want to make a mess of your boards, obviously it's going to cost a lot of money to fix. Hope you enjoyed it, you can see a lot more videos soon, get the lockdown over and done with, a bit more wild camping, more kayaking, kayak camping, kayak fishing, sailing, a bit of everything. Don't forget doing the coast to coast end of April I'll put up some more videos about that beforehand. I'm also going to do as a Royal Mail sponsorship because I work for Royal Mail. If you do charity events, they'll sponsor you. They'll match what they call match giving, so they'll match whatever I raise. I will put a sponsorship links on any videos I talk about that. If anyone fancy sponsoring me, I'm also going to be documenting that with video and pho photography as I go posting daily updates on Instagram and Facebook accounts. Going to do it over 12 days. I've already packed all the rations. We'll sort out the ration packs. Doing dehydrated rations. Also going to be stopping takeaways, maybe the odd pub lunch. Pubs open again on the 12th for outdoor serving, so hopefully should be able to get some sustenance that way. The dry rations will keep me going for the rest of the time. But more about that later. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later.